Welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel. We're going to conduct a review of the Roth IRA account number one. This is really the flagship account that started it all for me. This is the one that I insist that a lot of people need to be made aware that exists out there. And I think a lot of people would understand that they're part of a managed program. If they just need to look a little bit further below the surface and see what they're actually invested in a self-directed designation over your Roth IRA, make sure that they can't uh, charge you hidden fees, management fees, yearly fees, uh, any of those types of things, which can really hamper your returns over the years to make sure it's self-directed, take control of your own money, take control of your own financial future, man, you'll be liberated and you'll be what I consider to be empowered going forward, guys. So stick around, we'll conduct the review. All right, guys, so this will be a quick review of the Roth IRA number one. I do these reviews now about every month. I think that's a, a good mark to aim for. This is a 20 holding portfolio. There's currently one passive ETF here with the small cap Vanguard VBK. That's the growth um, uh, small cap uh, ETF offering there. Um, I am holding a touch of cash on the side here in this portfolio. And we'll introduce that back into the S&P 500 VOO. That's the one I like to hold into this. We currently don't own it. But uh, the rest of it, single stock, a mix of value and some speculation and some higher cap, uh, big cap growth in here. Um, so top end starting at Bristol-Myers. We swung this into the Roth here and um, bought it at the wrong time. Uh, we took profits in the other account, nice profits I might add. Um, and we swung it in here to grab ourselves some healthcare exposure. That's totally fine. Um, Bristol Myers is one of those companies that I feel like is extremely undervalued here, and we'll own it long. Totally fine. Cisco Systems next, and big technology, old tech, and um, it fills out a nice position in the portfolio uh, in big tech. Um, nice dividend paying, nice value company, uh, just over 100 shares. Chevron in the oil space, uh, it's the only big oil that I own in this portfolio, um, complement a couple big oil positions in the other Roth IRA, um, but Chevron I've owned for a long, long time, and this has just been all over the place. I don't try to track oil right now with what's going on. Um, it does grab me a little dab of exposure, just over 32 shares in Chevron. I'm okay with the position size, nice dividend payer. And uh, we'll just continue to own that, be a value investor in the in the name. Disney in the uh, telecom communications sector uh, is an interesting pick here. Monitoring it, rather sizable position here in the portfolio. Um, I, I think it's actually a, a little bit overvalued with what is going on right now. I think a lot of people would put a lot of value in their streaming service. Um, I'm not quite so bullish on it i'd like to see all uh cylinders firing for disney on um as they reopen the parks and get things back to somewhat normal um but it's you know one of those companies that's just always been one of my favorites to own and to invest in and and be a participant in this fine company it's well run well managed one of the best content providers out there and it is a multi uh diversified business with their cruise ships their theme parks uh, their streaming service um, and their online service. So, you know, it's a good one. It's a good one to fill the space, one of the best in breeds. Uh, Facebook as well, same sector, telecom. Uh, I, you know, kind of put a little technology twist on Facebook. I really do. Um, but the social media giant just came off a fabulous quarter, making money hand over fist. Fabulous uh, ad revenue margins just up close to 40%. Uh, prices increasing uh, ever so slightly. Uh, every year, uh, quarter over quarter, raising those prices, I might add, companies don't care. They got to do business with Facebook. They're the, they, they are the ad revenue space. And um, just, just growing that business incrementally, it's like a big cap uh, growth company. It's growing like a weed. It's incredible. Um, so nice, sizable 25 share position in Facebook. Um, have a, a, a nice position and highly on right below that in the industrial sector. This is the one of two spec positions that I have in here. Um, the next one is right below it in uh, social capital, which is uh, going to be SoFi after this back merger completes. 
um, obviously just been completely obliterated with the SPAC holding specifically. Any SPAC related anything has just been absolutely clobbered, um, which is fine. These are two companies that I want to own anyway. Um, Hylion obviously is not a SPAC anymore. It's gone through its spec merger process, one of the first to do so, um, but looking to get its footing here. Uh, and SoFi, I believe both of these have the potential for, for multi-X baggers. Um, so that, that aspect of this portfolio I have high hopes for. Uh, and in the, in the short term, obviously looking at it and going through a little bit of uh, um, short-term pain in the names, um, th that's just part of the territory, okay? And that, that happens. Um, and uh, if you want to be an investor, uh, especially on the speculative side, you, you got to make sure that you can weather some storms like that. That's just what it takes. Uh, JP Morgan, biggest financial holding here uh, in this particular portfolio. It is kind of the cornerstone in here. Uh, Microsoft and big tech at a 25 share position in Microsoft. We'll look to monitor that. I may add to it as it comes down if that's what it's going to do. I think Microsoft long term is just going to be absolutely fabulous. Scary to see where this could be in five years. Uh, right below that Realty Income Core, this really anchors my real estate exposure in, in my total part of portfolio. Um, this is a big position, over 100 shares of Realty Income. Pays the uh, monthly dividend. Really nice position to hold in the Roth. Uh, we just we just sit here and watch this sucker pay. It's up close to 12%. Can't can't complain. Right below that, my, one of my favorite staples plays is Pepsi. Um, Pepsi's a juggernaut, just over five grand, uh, 36 shares of the company. It's up 5%, not too bad, but I like the 3% dividend. Very strong, um, very well managed, and um, it's an easy company to own in staples and uh, fills out a nice large position in the portfolio here. Uh, Pfizer's been down a little bit. It's fought back a touch. 126 shares, uh, been kind of all over the place with this holding. I don't hold it in quite as high a regard as Merck, but uh, healthcare has just really had a shift in um, in some of the healthcare names, and some of them have really caught favor. And um, I'll chronicle the newest holding here is United Health Group, a Dow component that I've added in here that I'm very, very bullish on based on my evaluation of the company. I rolled it out of the M1 Finance. I replaced it with Amgen and then rolled UNH into this portfolio. It just seemed to be the right move. A great Roth IRA pick, something you can just hold for the next 5, 10 years uh, and just be glad doing so. Procter & Gamble as well, premier staples play. You just got to own it. It's that simple. Really nice cornerstone in the portfolio visa we entered into one of the biggest positions we've owned to 25 shares um, in technology so it's the only fintech play we have he here um, uh, aside from the sofi but i need to get that through the spac merger and then convert those warrants to common shares to put us at a nice even 500 there um, in social capital uh, when it when it transitions over and completes its spac merger then i'll be a spac free I won't own any more SPACs for a while anyway. It's the last last one that I own. And then I've already mentioned the Vanguard small cap VBK. That's a fave of mine. Uh, needed some small cap growth exposure, so no better place to get it than there. And Verizon here uh, has always kind of held a nice telecom piece within this nice dividend payer. Uh, and then Wells Fargo. Um, this is the first time that it's been in the black here for years i have owned this for going on three or four years taken in some really deep water and it's nice to see that position really fight its way back and get into the black again and and we'll, we'll continue to monitor wells as they um you know look to improve their book of business and you know it's always been really good Comparatively speaking, it's the most undervalued. Um, I, I actually buy all traditional ma metrics, kind of look at it, that it's somewhat fairly valued, if not slightly overvalued, but they need to they need to win back investor confidence and consumer uh, confidence as well with uh, moving out of the era of the scandal um, and kind of looking forward to um, getting back to their roots um, in, um, in, in being one of those premier banking services. And then finally, Walmart in the staples category. Right there at the bottom, just sleepy money. Um, Walmart's an easy company to own, a Dow component. And um, we'll just continue to own that to fill out some staples exposure. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this a comprehensive review of the 20 holdings here within the Roth IRA. Number one, with that, we'll kick you back and we'll conclude the video. All right, guys. So we've come out of the review of the Roth IRA account. Number one This is actually my wife's account. Hope you guys enjoyed the transparency of the account. We're building quite nicely. Um, some of the positions are doing quite well. Um, some positions need, need a little bit more time and work on. That's fine. That's investing 101. That's just the nature of the game. That's how it goes sometimes. Um, this has been built up over a number of years. Uh, so I would encourage you guys you know, to start, start slow, start with, with scale that's appropriate for you. Uh, start in a manner that makes sense for you. Um, this is just to provide a testimonial on what's possible uh, in self-directed investing. Um, when you look to establish the right account to liberate your dollars uh, from the effects of fees over time. These are the accounts that started it all for me, the self-directed Roth IRA account. And there's no more singular review that I do that's more important than these. Guys, if you appreciate the message, then make sure and subscribe to the Independent Investor channel. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video and share the message with anybody out there that you think might appreciate uh, the delivery. Uh, get them started in investing and wealth building for themselves. Take control of your own financial future. Super important to get to the younger folks as early as we can start them on this empowered journey to uh, finance to a financial future that is secure uh, and is uh, is lucrative into the future guys thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future